episode of Last Minute Laura. I'm Laura and today I am going to start another natural diet experiment. This time I'm doing something a little bit different in that it's going to be a competition between two natural dye stuffs, neither of which I've ever used before. So I'm pretty excited to see how they turn out and I kind of hope you'll give it a try too just because you might have these plants in your yard. So what are the two plants? I'm going to be using the common dandelion. I've collected about, I would say, two, three cups of dandelion blossoms, just the blossoms, maybe a little bit of stem here and there. And I'm going to be using those as the first yellow competitor. The second competitor I'm using today is Black Eyed Susans. So these are one of my favorite late summer flowers. They're a beautiful yellow, golden yellow, sort of like a daisy or a sunflower but they've got a black center and not much of a smell. It just sort of smells green when you sniff it. I'm hoping that these are going to give me some yellow between the two of them. I don't really know though, because I haven't dyed with either, but I have seen both referenced in natural dye books before. For a mordant today, so that's the dye fixative, I'm going to be using alum powder and cream of tartar. I'm using Hoosier Farm alum powder and Gillette's cream of tartar. I got both of those on Amazon, so if you're interested in starting natural dye, check out my Amazon links below. It doesn't cost you anymore, but it helps out the channel a little bit. I'm also going to be dyeing 100% pure wool today. I'm using Briggs and Little sport weight wool, which is like a number three or two. It's a soft weight one ply. It's a loosely spun yarn and I'm using the bleached white to try and get as much color visible as possible. So to begin this project, I have to scour the wool. I'm going to soak the wool in soapy water on the stove, not at boiling. I'm just going to keep it below a simmer for about half an hour to get all of the oils out of the wool. While the wool is soaking, I've put two pots of water on the stove and I'm going to add the dandelions to one pot and the Black Eyed Susans to the other pot. I wanna keep them separate because again, I'm trying to find out between the two of them what is going to give us the most beautiful color. Um, so I'm going to do that now. The alum and the cream of tartar won't be added until after the wool has been completely washed out of all of the soapy water. So I'm going to leave these pots on a medium low. I don't even want them to simmer because yellow is such a gentle color. I just want to coax it out of the flowers. So I'm going to keep it on a low setting just to steam them up, just to heat them for about half an hour. And then I'm going to wash the wool out. So I'll show you what it's looking like now. I'll bring you in for a close up, And then in about half an hour, I'll show you how the dandelions, how the black eyed Susans and how the wool is looking. Okay, so now we're at the half hour point. The yarn is ready to have the soap rinsed out of it and the natural dye baths are starting to take on a little bit of color. It's nothing too, too dramatic at this point, just a little yellow. The Black Eyed Susans has a little bit more of a gold hue to it, so I'm really excited about that one. I'm gonna leave them on that low heat while I rinse out the yarn and while the yarn is sitting in the mordant. So let's do that now. And that is just going to sit on a medium low heat for about an hour, hour and a half, and then we'll rinse it out and the dye bath should be done. Okay, so we're at the one hour mark since this yarn was added to the water. You can see it's not even simmering, just nice and hot. I'm gonna remove the water, oh, the yarn now, and then I'm going to rinse out the alum mordant. And then I think it's gonna be time to strain out the dye stuffs from this dye bath. Even though there's still a little bit of yellow in those petals, the liquid itself is super dark and the dandelion liquid has a nice yellow hue to it as well. I think that they've had enough of a sit in that dye, in that water I should say. So I'm going to strain out the dye liquid and wash out the yarn now.
Okay, so at this point, the um, Black Eyed Susan is giving us pretty much a brown, um, which I think is from the middle part of the flowers. I think that's where we're getting the color from, not from the petals. Whereas the dandelions are giving us like a really nice pale yellow, almost has a hint of green, like a citrine. Um, but we'll see what happens. I'm gonna leave them here overnight with no heat on them, just sitting in the pots overnight. And I'll show you how they're looking first thing in the morning, but let me give you some close-up cinematics. Okay, friends, so it's the next day now, and the colors are lackluster. Neither of them are really yellow. Like, the dandelion gave this sort of very pale yellow. It's just a hair darker than what the yarn was, and I think once we rinse it out, we're barely gonna have anything. I don't think I had nearly enough dye stuff. And the Black Eyed Susans <laughs> gave me this nice taupey brown. So since I'm just a little disappointed in the color, I mean, like, I'm not disappointed. I'm just feeling like it was a little bit lackluster. I have a plan. I have a plan of attack. What I want to do is take a little bit of my cotton string and these mid sections, tie them up, and then I want to tie them to something a little higher to keep most of the yarn out of the dye bath. And then I want to modify the dye bath with a little bit of a high alkaline solution. So I'm going to be using my wood ash solution. Um, if you want to understand a little more about that, you can check that out. I will link a tutorial video on how I make my wood ash solution and what it's used for down below. Okay, and I don't really know which direction we're going to go if we um, alkaline modify. We could get any number of things, but I guess this didn't really turn into a yellow competition after all. First, we'll do a little test. Take a little bit of the alkaline to darken it right down so it might make it kind of a green, I don't know yet. And then alkaline into the dandelions. Ooh, that looks like it could brighten it up a bit. So we might get yellow from the dandelions, we might not get yellow from the, whatchamacallit, the Black Eyed Susan. So I'm just gonna add that in now. Ooh, that is pretty. You know what? It made the wool turn color. Definitely brightened the yellow. And I think I'll leave it in there, I don't know, maybe just for 15 minutes, just to secure it. I don't know how long the after bath needs in order to be fixed on the dye. So we will just leave it to see, and then I'll rinse it out in about 15 minutes. It did sit overnight, so. All right, we're at 15 minutes. I'm gonna cut this free and excuse the sound of the dryer in the background. I have clothes that need to be dried. Um, and I'm going to now wash out the skein. Okay, so now the yarn is rinsed. And let me just put it on this white towel so you can see the colors that we got. Okay, so in the battle for yellow, it looks like Dandelion is currently winning. Um, with the alkaline after bath, it turned it to a nice soft sort of banana ice cream yellow. And the Black Eyed Susan came out a little bit greenish and the area that was just mordanted with alum ended up sort of like a tan brown. So I'm gonna let this hang outside for the rest of the day just to dry. It's a beautiful hot day today. And hopefully that will, you know, do some magic, but I'm happy with it. It's just like a gentle, it looks like something like baby clothes right now. So gentle, soft, neutrals, little hints of green and yellow, some cream. I'm gonna hang it up though, and the next shot you'll see will be the dried, twisted skein that we all know and love. So, I will see you tomorrow. Okay, friends, so if you remember, we started off with Briggs and Little Sport White Wool in bleached white. And are you ready for the final reveal? Ta-da! Oh, it's just so sweet. I'm so happy with how this color turned out. At first, I wasn't 100% sure about it. I'm gonna be honest with you. But the longer that I stare at this dried skein, it is, it's so 
whimsical. It looks like a baby bloomer set or a baby cardigan. I can just see all of the beautiful, like, little things. It looks like it should be something little, little and soft. So these greenish gray tones here, that is from the Black Eyed Susan. And this pale, beautiful, pale banana yellow is from the Dandelions. Can you believe that? So this was supposed to be a yellow competition, but it turned into, I don't even know what we'd call this, a, an early morning garden party. I kind of think it feels like an, an early morning summer breeze. It's kind of cool, kind of gentle and quiet. It's like a very delicate color, but still really beautiful. The greens in this section are more leafy and more, um, Hmm, more yellow toned greens. And then the greens turn into this almost gray jade sort of color. And the yellow is like the softest banana ice cream yellow. I really do love it. I think it'll make a really beautiful baby thing. That's my hope for it anyway. What do you think? Let me know in the comments down below what you think of this colorway and what you think I should call it. I'm thinking summer breeze. What do you think of that? Let me know, like I said in the comments, and like the video. If you liked this color or if you liked watching this video, let me know. It's the easiest way to let me know and I definitely appreciate all of you who like the video and to those of you who subscribe. By the way, don't forget to subscribe to the video. I put out new videos every single day. I live stream Monday to Friday from 7 a.m. until about 8.30 a.m. Eastern time and then I put out edited videos just like this one on Saturdays and Sundays and on Tuesdays. So check back tomorrow for more Last Minute Laura content just like this. That's pretty much all I've got for you today. That's not true, I just remember. Don't forget to check the shop, www.lastminutelaura.ca. If you love this skein and you have the perfect thing that you wanna make with it, check the shop. This one's going up there this weekend. So by the time you see this video, this one will be available on my shop, www.lastminutelaura.ca. Oh, I just love it. It's so sweet. I actually, no, I don't need to make any baby items. I don't need to keep this one. I have to talk myself out of it. Every time I make a ball of yarn, a beautiful color, I always get attached to it, but it's not gonna happen. I don't have any baby things to make, so. This one will be available on the shop. But anyways, friends, that is all that I've got for you today. I really hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you'll check back tomorrow for something new. Thanks for watching. Bye.